You know what it's like. You go to take a selfie and you suddenly realise, oh no, my face is not moist enough and my phone is also not wet. Well, eBay has the answer for you with the USB rechargeable face moisturising selfie ring light. Let me demonstrate. You have a single button for controlling this and if you press it once, it lights up cold white, noting that the two of the LEDs here are super bright and one is very dim, not well matched. You press it again and it goes to a warm light, press it again, and it's an intermediate light with all the LEDs lit at once, but double press it, and it starts putting out vapour. Let me show you this in the dark. And I have to say, it does look quite stylish. So here is just haze in its own. Oh, that's dark. Cold white, warm white, and intermediate white. There we go. Watch your eyes. The light is coming back. The light is back. Let's turn this off. Double click to turn the haze off. And if we take a look at this side, it's got a micro USB charging port. It's got this clip so you can clip it over your phone and uh, have the camera pointing through the slot here. Let's take it apart. Let's use Phil's custom machine screwdriver to take this apart. So there are four screws holding this together. I did get it in pink, since it's traditional that I get uh, shady products in pink. I don't know if this is particularly shady. Well, not unless you fill it with water and it immediately spews it all down through your phone and destroys it in the process. That would be quite annoying. So that's three of the screws out. Here is the fourth. Oh, I'll show you how the water reservoir fills up too. Does this come off easily? Yes, it does. Oh, there's the lithium cell. It's not bad. It's not a bad size of lithium cell. To refill it, you slide the cap off like this and it reveals a little rubber plug that you can then pop out. It comes a little bottle for filling it with water and then once you've put that back in, you can slide this down, presumably for aesthetic reasons, but also to keep the little rubber cap in so it doesn't disgorge water in your luggage. Uh, that is a really tiny screw. That is an annoyingly tiny screw. Is this screwdriver going to fit it? Yes, kind of. It's not the correct size, but I'm just going to use brute force anyway. So we'll take the screws out that hold the circuit board in. I get the feeling I'm going to have to go further. I think I'm going to have to destructively pop the plastic back off. Hopefully it just clips on easily. Get shuck board with wires going in. Mm-hmm. Um, how does this come off? I shall apply force with an inappropriate screwdriver. This may make loud crunching, popping noises. Oh, you know what? Maybe the front lens comes off and it reveals hidden screws. That is a possibility. Where is the spudger? Where is the spudger? The spudger is not in sight. It has been used recently. Uh, one moment, please. The spudger had gone into hiding, but has since been recovered. Here it is. Let's see if we can slip this down the side and get this plastic cover off. Okay, it is clipping off. It is clipping off. Ah, not what I was expecting. Okay, so the whole plastic assembly has come out here. I don't think it's going to be easy to get this out without... But I'll tell you what, let's see if we can get the uh, actual LED cover off. Oh, I think that went in quite deep. Yes, there is the circuit board. I do feel the need to uh, light that now with the button. Uh, two very bright LEDs. There is the one that's completely off colour. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting enough. Right, tell you what. I'm going to take a picture of this circuit board and we shall explore it. Oh, look, look. Uh, it comes pre-fitted with uh, corrosion. I wonder if water's dribbled down if, or that's flux has gone onto that. It's uh, covered in green crusties. Schmoo. Okay. Let's uh, reverse engineer this and take a look at it. Okay, let's explore. That wasn't actually too hard to reverse engineer. It's very straightforward. I shall zoom in this to fill up the smaller screens for maximum visibility. The circuitry is quite interesting in that it has the classic charge chip, which is not clearly marked, but it, oh, it is actually. I can see a faint ghost. It is an LTH7, but it's an LTH7 charge control chip. And it's got a separate combined chip for protecting the lithium cell. That's like the equivalent of DW DW01 and the dual MOSFET package, but in a single package. And if you look at this positive pad here that goes out to the two LED circuits, 
that positive pad, if you drew a line down here, it would divide the circuitry very neatly into the charge and lithium protection circuitry and then the rest of the circuitry. It's quite interesting, quite neat that they did it that way. Um, there is a resistive divider, a very crude resistive divider, to give a signal over to the processor for when it, so it knows when it's plugged into the USB charger. There's two circuits switching the LEDs via 5.1 ohm resistors, and then there is a little transformer at this end, which uh, is switched by a MOSFET, and uh, it has sort of a center tap on two windings. Button, LED for the uh, processor to indicate modes, and this LED is controlled entirely by the charge circuitry. Let us take a look at the schematic. There are no surprises. I shall move this out of the way. The USB connection comes in and it has that potential divider with a 1K resistor and a 10K resistor and that goes over to the microcontroller and just tells it when it's plugged in and charging. It's like the classic LTH7, which has a 2K programming resistor, which is probably around about 500 milliamp. The lithium cell, incidentally, is currently under test. I've fully discharged it. It's currently charging. I shall make a note in the description of uh, its capacity. There is the classic, just a little red LED to show when it's charging, and when the LED goes out, it is charged. Um, this is the lithium cell down here with its little protection chip and a little filter across the lithium cell to give it a stable reference voltage to tell the state of that cell. 100 ohm, usually 100 nano. There's one decoupling capacitor for the general circuitry here. This uh, block down here represents a zero volt rail at the bottom, just to avoid drawing a line right down there. The microcontroller has a capacitor across it. Um, it has the button pulling to the zero volt rail. It has the LED being switched to the zero volt rail with its resistor. And then it's just three transistor circuits. All of them have 10k pull-down resistors. The two uh, Y1 NPN transistors, I shall write that in Y1, and I'll also put the little emitter indication. The two uh, NPN transistors have a 1k base resistor, uh, the 10k pull-down resistor, and then they are just switching the LEDs, the large parallel cluster of LEDs, down via these 5.1 ohm resistor each. The MOSFET has a zero ohm link. Initially, I thought maybe they did that because they wanted the option of adding a resistor in there. But to be honest, it's such a big resistor position. And because this is a single sided board, there really is just nothing in the back. It is a single sided surface mount board. Uh, they've got a zero ohm link here just for the to jump over another track. And I think that's what they've done here. They've uh, jumped over the positive track here with that link. But I drew it in anyway. In this case, the MOSFET is effectively being driven hard by the microcontroller. The MOSFET pulls down the center tap of the transformer. One end is connected to the positive. It presumably has a heavy winding on the first section, or maybe it's the same size of a wire, but it's got a, maybe, I would guess, it's got a much higher number of turns in the secondary, then leading across to the piezoelectric crystal. So when this uh, MOSFET is pulsed at a fixed frequency set in the processor, it uh, pulses this effect with this primary coil, and that results in a higher voltage across the piezoelectric crystal. Courtesy of Marie Curie's husband, Pierre Curie, who was a pioneer in piezoelectric crystal technology. And that piezoelectric crystal is a disk of the crystal. It's basically speaking, you've got a, a metal disk with the outer layer of piezo crystal, and then uh, fine perforations in the middle where the water sits. And uh, the way it's mounted, it just pulses that metal disc with ultrasonic energy and atomizes the water through those holes. And that is it. Nothing really incredibly exciting. It is. It didn't get me moist. Not as moist as it will make your face, obviously. And that is it. The parallel array of LEDs, it would have been nice if they'd matched them a bit better because there is a major irregularity between LED matching. Uh, but other than that, I suppose it does the job. It illuminates you in cold white, warm white, or both. Um, and it's got that little piezoelectric transducer and a water reservoir just to atomize water into your face or whatever you want to do with atomize water. And that is it. Interesting device, quite well designed, but strangely pointless.